Just before the food is ready, I actually made an enormous amount of salad. I'm gonna talk about running with barefoot style shoes, flat white toe box, zero drop, minimalist, five finger, all kind of shoes. Because it's been a long time that these things exist and people still get injured because they change suddenly and because they don't consider other factors affecting their running stride. And you know, uh, still there are a lot of complaints about shoes injuring people. Shoes do not injure people. Badly chosen shoes might cause some issues like, you know, uh, maybe a too stiff or too narrow, too wide, too short or too long shoes cause issues, but the properly fitted shoe will never cause any injuries. Running form, lifestyle and periodization actually what causes injuries most likely in case of running. So lifestyle, you know, not eating, sleeping, hydrating properly and um, stressing out and uh, being seated all day long. Periodization, doing too fast, too soon, uh, not knowing about warming up at cool down, not knowing about mobility, flexibility, stretching, exercises, strength and conditioning and bed run technique, you know, heel striking really far ahead of the body or even if four foot striking having a cadence of 50 or having a bad posture really pulling the head down maybe having a crossover strike crossover arms whatever you know these three things lifestyle running mechanics and bad periodization not shoes back to our subject barefoot running why is it why would we do it i mean i, I talk about natural running, natural running stride, natural running style. Uh, we like to run like this because it prevents us, it prevents injuries, it facilitates easy forward movement, it facilitates higher mileage, it, it, it makes our activity more enjoyable and we can do more and we will want more and we will enjoy running more because landing on the ball of the foot having a high cadence, leaning from the ankle, breathing by the nose, having low heart rate, uh, just chilling, enjoying running is a fantastic way to pass your time yet together with your thoughts and just enjoy, just chill. I don't have to be worrying about injuries, about pain, about anything, just roll, roll, roll. And to actually be able to run the most efficiently on this way we can choose actually running shoes that are extremely comfortable and what actually facilitates these kind of movements so as i said uh, forefoot running style stabilizing with the big toe and uh, rolling over to the other toes and then slightly touching with the heel and snapping back by using the free elastic energy of the Achilles tendon. The shoe is the flattest and the widest. The more you can stabilize with actually all of your toes and the more easily you can activate the free elastic energy that will actually propel you forward. This is why we are looking for these shoes. The second, why do we look for shoes with no cushioning? Sometimes it's a fantastic way to just go out and jog around with an extremely high cadence and just release the body, just relax all of your muscles and have a just chill out, easy sensation and running because all those uh, small nerves at the bottom of your feet get stimulated. So what do we talk about here? For instance, uh, why wouldn't you run actually barefoot? Because there are so many things on the road that you don't want to actually encounter with your bare feet that not it, 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 it includes all kinds of things like bacteria, maybe viruses, I don't know, sharp elements, objects, dog shit. I don't know, it's like you don't want to necessarily think that much about 
everything what is ahead of you and looking downwards you want to be maybe looking more forward and just focusing on the motion itself not necessarily your close surroundings but your big surrounding this is why in this case there is this vibrant five finger it's uh, i think it's a road running model it's called v road or uh, v run something like this got it for 30 bucks on ebay size 46 and fantastic shoe it has around hmm, i would say four millimeter of cushioning and this is more likely not cushioning but actually the outsole and it lets you run as you should be running i don't like to do serious workouts in these because um, you know running on the road is not healthy because it's an unnatural surface so you need a kind of neutralizing thing like cushioning uh, in case of uh, faster running to absorb the shock coming back from the road if i was running on a soft non-grippy surface like let's say uh, kind of hard sandy non-rocky terrain no issues barefoot running we go a long way with it and i can i can run i can do speed workout and all kind of stuff but you know like uh, even the running track because of that rubbery surface each time you make a stride it pulls your uh, toes away your uh, your skin actually it, it, it has, a, has a slight pull on your skin it's not it's not a good feeling it's not uh, i prefer walking let's say on the on the trails and dirt so there are other options for instance this one 17 mil cushioning white toe box zero drop extremely breathable extremely flexible as well no heel counter wraps your feet around and just run it easy 210 grams it's not the lightest in the market but it's quite a good shoe it's a zero drop shoe as well ultra escalante racer so for trails there are a lot of ultra models as well but if we go up on the minimalist scale for instance for trail running there is the La Sportiva Helios SR, what is a, um, we can say, quite protective, extremely flexible and light trail running shoe with just a little bit of protection in case of a, uh, a thicker uh, plastic layer, but still, you know, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing. It has 2mm heel to toe offset, so quite flat. However, there is one thing here pointy toe box. It's white in case of the midfoot but the toe box tapers off and it's not necessarily always the problem but the inner part of this shoe is uh, curving in so you definitely cannot stabilize as well with your big toe two mil drop quite light 200 and something grams we can go lighter four mil drop not much cushioning road running shoe type a8 from saucony very tommy pointy toe box a bit less of a curvature on the inside however uh, you know it's it, it's a very soft and stretchy mesh material so it can accommodate quite large feet as well i run 99.9 percent .9 of all times in ultra shoes i have some vivo barefoot shoes and topo shoes and sometimes when i race i still like to choose these shoes because of the precision uh, and the fast feeling of a of a shoe somehow these white toe box shoes including you know metal shoes as well uh, might not have the proficiency in case of cushioning so that rebound and that flexibility and that and that uh, moving together with your feet is kind of lacking in some of the barefoot running shoes so this is why the type a for instance is always in my rotation so while i can run basically in any type of shoe and i choose most likely to do it in ultra i still have some shoes with two or four millimeter drop in the rotation so again we discussed the why because the type of running we would like to perceive we would like to practice like forefoot leaning forward propelling using the achilles tendon as an elastic free energy return device uh, it's better facilitated by using a shoe what lets us stabilize our feet by opening up the toes and 
really uh, touching all the way, stretching all the way down the Achilles tendon and bounding forward. So the lower the drop, the better it goes. The thing is that most people get injured because first they transition too fast. So they come from 12, 14, 15 millimeter of offset and they come down to four. Not gonna happen. So they have to include some transitioning time. Uh, four millimeter is quite achievable, achievable to every single person on the planet. Uh, they might need three months to one year, going down to 10, eight, six, and four. Maybe they can play with the cushioning as well. So going down from, let's say 20, 35 shoe, slowly, slowly, slowly to an uh, 18, 26, and then to a uh, 17, 24, and slowly just going, going, going down uh, in case of cushioning, especially for runners who like to include some speed and do 10K, 5K races, because you know what, this will actually make them uh, run faster. In the meantime, of course, they should be practicing proper running mechanics to strengthen their biomechanics, strengthen their limbs, strengthen their posture, their core, strengthen everything what is considered to be part of running. And of course, always uh, warming up, cool down and exercises for flexibility and mobility should be included all the time as well, every single day. So we talked about transitioning towards a four millimeter drop shoe, quite possible for everybody. Getting into zero drop running becomes a little bit different than this because zero drop means that you will stretch out your Achilles tendon to its natural length. And this length does not really exist anymore in most of the humans. That means that because you spend 12 to 14 to 18 hours every single day of your life in the last 40 years, in the last 20 years, in the last 30 years, so we talk about decades of calcifying and shortening your posterior chain, uh, unless you transition all of your lifestyle shoes and all of your habits actually, to a zero drop platform, you will never properly adapt to zero drop running shoes, ever. So you might incorporate an Ultra uh, 1 version 3 to your circulation in case of running shoes and you might race in it as a racing flat, but you cannot actually change all of your running shoes and change all of your outings, how can I, I would say, uh, to a zero drop practice, unless you change all of your lifestyle shoes before to zero drop shoes and white toe box shoes. Why is that? Because if you keep on shortening, if you keep on calcifying, if you keep on imprinting bad neuromuscular habits, you won't be able to actually uh, use, you won't be able to get into full range of motion without uh, injuring your body. How, how, how would it be uh, easy to explain to you? It's like uh, static stretching, exactly it's like static stretching. If you static stretch a muscle and then you load that muscle, you might be able to get into ranges of motions with that muscle that is not that ranges of motion is not practiced with weight. So for instance, you stretch out your quads, your hamstrings, your calves and your ankles, then you get into a, a squat, uh, a normal squat, and you go deeper with the same weight, but you cannot get back up. It's the exact same thing because you cannot generate power from those end ranges because you've never practiced. This is why, uh, you know, like if you want to push yourself forward on the same way like you did from a deeper position, so you stretched maybe a bit more forward in case of uh, 
you know, like the knee lift. So your running stride is longer. So your back leg is stretching backwards longer as well. And you try to push forward yourself because you are running fast and your Achilles tendon just pack will snap or some fibers of the Achilles tendon and the gastrocnemius and the soleus muscle just pop and uh, you will feel that it's not gonna be uh, really pleasant. So again, it's very similar to static stretching. It's static shortening, I would say. So all day long, you are in a elevated heel, shoes that are squeezing your toes together. So despite that you are putting on a white toe box shoes, your toes will stay like this. And actually, uh, your Achilles tendon will be really stressed out and maybe you will not even, even be able to just shortly touch the ground all the time with your heels if you run forward. So in this case, for some people, actually it's not a good idea to transition because most of these people are not willing to learn, are not patient and are not uh, ready to change because uh, you might need to change lifestyle habits if you want to actually rework your feet from this to this, to eliminate bunions, to eliminate uh, heel spurs and you might even need to have some operation to get back to proper health and people might find that the soul is so little stimulated that a short 20 minute walk will make them dire ear, you know, like they make them crapping because those nerves are getting again re-stimulated on a way that it actually agitates the body. So transition to barefoot lifestyle before barefoot running is uh, quite necessary and it needs a lot of precautions and it needs a lot, lot of knowledge and it needs a lot of exercises so sleeping with toe spacers and using just this jail at, at least the jail uh, toe spacer for in between the big toe and uh, the other one uh, nearby using uh, exercises all day long because if you do 20 minutes each morning it's it goes a long way of course for years but it's 168 hours a week and 20 minutes uh, a day it's not gonna happening so Every hour, just a bit of stretching, just a bit of mobility, using uh, your gaining, your growing knowledge. You can use the how uh, long becoming a supple leopard, uh, becoming uh, the other book of Kelly Starrett. I think it was Run, Run Strong or Run Better. Check out the books of Kelly Starrett. It's a great way to learn how to get back into full ranges of motion in case of your body. I mean. You will see that once you are getting into this habit of being healthier, so it won't be everything about your feet and your ankle. That's the base of everything, of course. You should be able to stand strong and stable and uh, using your toes to start that chain of torque in the body that will elevate you. But after you will see that hmm, I should be getting some mobility, some full range of motion. Uh, into my shoulders as well. Maybe I should decalcify my spine. Wow, I should be hydrating actually before uh, races, before running, before movement. I should be hydrated. Maybe I need to get some uh, amino acids. Maybe I need to supplement with creatine. Maybe I need to supplement with electrolytes. Maybe I should change my diet. Maybe I should be sleeping a little bit more because all these things affect ligamental, tendon health, muscular health, joint health, elasticity of all of these and uh, your movements and your thoughts and the, um, the way how you will perform your actual life itself. So again, if you are a runner and want to be faster, you can effectively get down to 4mm drop shoes, change all of your shoes to 4mm drop. If you want, you can get maybe wider shoes as well. I think Topo has nearly as wide toe box as the ultra shoes and they have some models that have a, that have a two or four millimeter uh, offset if you want to get down to completely zero drop shoes because you just feel very fine in them in ultra shoes uh, if you want to run only off only in those shoes so 
Metal Ultra Topo, uh, Five Fingers, uh, Scora and Filmax and you know all these brands, you go barefoot, you have to be changing all of your lifestyle shoes, your office shoes, your work shoes, your driving shoes to zero drop shoes and it might take a three year long transition. We did not really get into the depth of how it would look like, but as I said, it will need uh, a lot of lifestyle changes and a lot of regular exercise routines for those ankles and toes and afterwards for the whole body too. And this will, of course, a bit eliminate some of the distance and some of the time you spend running because you will be spending these uh, muscular activation movements. You'll be spending time on these before each of your run and after each of your run and flexibility and so so again, this was a little talk about barefoot running, minimalist running and transitioning and I just gave you some advices on what to do, how to do and what not to do. So don't buy a pair of ultra shoes and go out to run 45k. Cheers!